I have played an excessive amount of Wolverine games in my life. From the NES to the Game Boy Color to the Xbox 360, no console generation is complete without offering up at least one opportunity to take control of the most violent, deranged character Marvel has to- OH MY FUCKING GOD! If I were, say, a quality YouTuber, we'd probably be discussing this horrifyingly brutal display. But today we are going to instead take it back to a time before I could assess quality with my human brain and play the 2004 title X2. Wolverine's Revenge. As a 10 year old during the golden age of the cash grab, I fucking loved this game. I played through it a million times. I unlocked everything there was to unlock, picked up every dog tag, did every move, I... Wait, give me a second here. I still have the fucking strategy guide for this game. Look at that shit, it still says new. This shit is 15 years old. I have the evidence to back up my claims. I am an OG X2 Wolverine's Revenge video game player. This is all I can brag about. This is all I have in my life. Today I'm going to be discussing the gameplay and the story of X2 to give it the proper critiquing that it probably doesn't actually deserve. I don't know, we'll see. Gameplay. The core of X2's gameplay involves either sneaky stealthing or straight up stabbing your way through multiple linear levels in a quest to secure a cure for Wolverine's shitty metal bone disorder. The combat of this game, which is the central focus, is not great, but it's also not the worst thing I've ever encountered. The most positive thing I can find to say about it is that it exists, and I am fine with that. <laughs> So as you can see, it's heavy combat that revolves around standing back, blocking, and waiting for your moment to strike lest you get caught in massive stun-locking combos. You know what this means, I have to say it. X2 Wolverine's Revenge is the Dark Souls of X-Men games. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, it, was, it was teed up for me already, guys. But honestly, I know it's a fucking cop-out to compare a hard game to Dark Souls simply on the basis that it is hard, but I swear to Christ, this game gaped my holes so rigorously at certain points that I started having Dark Souls flashbacks! Sure, jokey jokey, comedy bullshit, this game looks like Dark Souls. No, it's nothing like Dark Souls from a gameplay standpoint, but from a raw, emotional perspective. This game stoked the same fires of rage inside of me that were sparked when I first fucking played Dark Souls. The pure agony I felt after going through Act 3, Mission 1, 15 fucking times, only to get mowed down right before the final room. I nearly shit my pants, guys. I know it might be a cliche joke at this point, but I seriously do not know how I fucking beat this game as a child. Because I was a stupid child! This maddening frustration I felt mostly falls on the checkpoint system. Or should I say, the complete lack of a checkpoint system. If you fail a level in Wolverine's Revenge, you have to start it all over again. And that would be fine if the levels were built for a human to play them, and not a robot built to specifically navigate this fucking labyrinthian nightmare of a video game! Before we jump back into combat, which is what I was about to describe about three minutes ago, I'm gonna take some time to discuss the level design of Wolverine's Revenge, because I've already gone off on a tangent, might as well finish it. The level design of this game is kinda hard to describe. It's so linear, but at the same time, it's not. Does that make any sense at all? Okay, so I feel like an example is necessary for this. Act 3, Mission 1. Wolverine sneaks into Alkali Lake, the Weapon X testing facility, so he can find some evidence to help him cure his fucked up metal skeleton disease. Oh hey, look at that, snow deformation. This game came out in 2004. Eat shit, Red Dead. You can play this level in two ways, those ways being combat-based and stealth-based. If you want to play this level without stealth, you must first run forward and watch this cutscene. Now the turret are on your ass. After this, you must take a sharp left and head into this room. Fight the two guards in here, blow up the generators, another cutscene. Fight these three guys, take a left, fight these two guys, go into this room, fight this Back one guy, to an activate section. your mutant senses to punch a bouncing crate with a decoder inside, kill these two use guys. the decoder from the bouncing box Marble to unlock the door, door. Game make your etc, 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 etc. Now, if you want to play this level stealthily, you must instead take an immediate left at the start of this level and kill this specific guard. You must then stealthily make your way to the generator room from earlier, but this time you have to kill these two guards in this manner exactly, or other guards will be alerted to your position. So you must then the enter the hangar wire, area, stealth track to the ladder, guys, and orange exactly. fire operators. Blah, blah, blah. blah. <sighs> Each level of Wolverine is a journey of discovery in which you will feebly attempt to nose your way to the end through pure trial and error like a blind rat in some hellish test maze, making it just an inch further with every passing death. Do you really think I knew how to beat that level back there because I played it just once or twice? No, friend. Frankly, it is embarrassing, but I'd be lying if I didn't admit that that level took me a FULL WEEK to beat. Alright, uh, what's another simile I could use to describe it? Uh, playing this game is like putting together an elaborate jigsaw puzzle, 
that occasionally just punches you in the face. And spoilers, when you do finally put the puzzle together, it's just a picture of a big piece of shit. So to boil it down, the level design of X2 is incredibly linear and based on executing very specific tasks, while also still offering up the occasional choice in terms of how you want to tackle scenarios. Honestly, when described like that, it doesn't sound too bad. That's probably because I'm sugarcoating it. Aside from the actual raw design of the levels, which isn't too bad, in terms of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, this balance of action and stealth just does not function about 75% of the time. The AI is laughably bad. Ha! Ha ha! Look! I killed an entire room by making every single one of them run head on to a fucking roaring fire! The stealth kill button is context sensitive and sometimes the game just doesn't feel like this is the right context for a stealth kill. The combat is sluggish and becomes plainly uninteresting after about 10 minutes. The levels are packed with insta-kill traps that gun you down before you can say unresponsive controls. What I'm trying to say here is that there are a mountain of issues with this game that keep this semi-dynamic level design from coming to fruition and really adding anything to the game. A good idea means nothing if the execution is lame. So that's a brief brief debrief of the level design for you, but before we got completely sidetracked with that shit, we were talking about catching them hands, so let's get back to combat. For a game based heavily around beat-em-up style action, the action here is oddly shallow. Yeah, it's not that odd, seeing as the target audience at the time was 13-year-old children, but if you look closely, it seems as if there are the seeds of a much deeper combat system buried in this title. As the game plays right now, pretty much any combat scenario can be dealt with by simply flailing your arms about like a fucking pool noodle. All you have to do is mash X, do the main claw combo, bam, you're golden, everybody's dead. That being said, there are a lot of moves in Wolverine's arsenal in X2. Like, a surprisingly unnecessary amount of moves. There's a button on the controller dedicated specifically to crouching and crawling around on all fours like a fucking weirdo. Does Wolverine ever actually do this? But aside from crouching's main use in stealth scenarios, you can also duck during combat, and certain enemies won't be able to hit you with high punches and kicks while you're ducking. There are three moves you can execute while ducking, those moves being an uppercut, a low kick, and a high kick. You have two other attacks that let you swing Wolvie's claws behind him to hit enemies trying to flank you. You can also block, evade, and jump over enemies. What does this all add up to, you may ask? Fucking BULLSHIT! Despite the fact that this game includes numerous abilities that let you perform complicated maneuvers like ducking high kicks, reverse attacks, and swan dives, NONE OF THAT SHIT EVER COMES INTO PLAY! Not once did I ever find a use for more than half of these attacks, mostly because, once again, the enemies are as dumb as a sack of fucking potatoes. I think that, ideally, the developers of X2 went into this project hoping to create a slightly more comprehensive fighting system that had you managing large groups of enemies through precise, thoughtful attacks, you know, ducking under swings by reading enemy tells, and then jumping over them to take them out creatively, that kind of shit. But in execution, when you are playing X2, all that potential falls to fucking pieces because they didn't program in the other half of the fucking fighting system! Do you think Bloodborne, or Dark Souls, or Metal Gear Rising, or DMC would be half the action games they are if the enemies weren't crafted with just as much care and imagination as the player character? I'll answer that for you. No, they wouldn't be. Because they'd turn into Wolverine's fucking revenge! In order to have all of these elaborate combat moves serve any kind of genuine purpose, you need enemy combatants that are just as elaborate as the given moveset. Enemies with weak points that react to certain attacks, enemies with animations or sound cues that can clue you into their upcoming attacks. Basic shit like this, guys. BASIC SHIT! But nah, nearly every single fucking enemy has the exact same half-hearted melee moveset, save for one or two small variations that really make no difference whatsoever. You keep seeing those same jerky-ass linguini leg roundhouse kicks over and over again, and after a certain point, it's so uninteresting that the only thing you want to do is take your claws to the motherfuckers and mash the slash to get to the end of it all. It's really sad to see what could have been a mildly intricate combat system go to waste because there's not a single challenge challenging or dynamic enemy to use it on. It really feels like the devs came up with this intricate fighting system with ducking dodges and retracted claw attacks and they modeled Wolverine and got him working in the engine, then they came to the AI and realized, oh shit, we gotta make enemies like, uh, uh, like fight, like fight real people, like players. Five minutes of deliberation later and they threw their cards up in the air and just said, fuck it, kids are stupid, they'll eat this shit up anyways. All they care about is if we slap Hugh Jackman's face on the game 16 fucking times, even though he's not even in the thing! Cash that fucking check, boys, let's buy some hookers! So yeah, the combat is just smash X to kill everything. Appropriate for the character, I guess. Oh, uh, something I probably should have mentioned earlier is the fact that there are also special takedown attacks that can be activated during combat by pressing B within the vicinity of pretty much anything, and they totally break combat and somehow make it even more meaningless than before. They do look pretty cool though, that I will concede.
All right, you've seen them once, that's all you need. They're a lot less cool after you've seen them 45,000 times. This game also has stealth, but I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to dedicate a whole extra five minute portion of this video to the stealth in X2 because, because it's, it's just crap. It's crap, guys. It's crap. It's crap, guys. It's crap! Quick bullet point so we can skip through this shit. Let's go. Fuck this stealth to death. Now, before we conclude our gameplay discussion, I want to take some time to hit on X2's third pillar of gameplay. We've already touched on two of the three, those three pillars being stealth, combat, and finally, standing around. Do you think I'm kidding? Because I'm fucking not. I'm surprised they didn't actively advertise this as a part of the experience because I swear to God, more than a solid hour of my time spent with X2 was dedicated solely to me standing in corners and waiting patiently. Wolverine doesn't wait patiently, what the fuck is this? The reason why standing in place and thinking about why the fuck you're playing this awful piece of shit is an integral part of gameplay is because Wolverine's healing factor takes roughly a quarter of a century to regenerate his health bar. You will constantly get chewed the fuck up by machine gun fire and have to retract and retreat back to safety for minutes on minutes on minutes on, on minutes. minutes. On minutes. Luckily, all you have to do is hit an enemy a single time and they'll drop their machine gun forever. Like, never to touch it again. It has been soiled now. Just, just, just pick up the gun, Logan. I know you love the claws, but just, just pick up the fucking gun! This whole thing would be so much better if I just had a gun. Oh, wait, no, no, this is terrible. I was so wrong. Sorry. Alright, now that the gameplay discussion's done, let's rewind it back to the most logical place to begin, the cover of the video game we will be discussing. We got uh, Hugh Jackman on the cover, we also got another picture of Hugh Jackman on the back. This game is clearly starring Hugh Jackman- Arr, Camel? You're just gonna tease me with the Jackman like that? I was told we were getting some Hugh, and we got Jackman! Yeah, I genuinely misremembered that. I thought Hugh Jackman was Wolverine in this game like 100% before I started playing again. Dementia setting in, I'm telling you. Luckily, they got, like, the one guy who can be appropriately substituted for any voice actor ever, Mr. Mark fucking Hamill. And I gotta tell ya, he makes a pretty dope Wolverine. We always had doubts about the ethical implications of Department H's work. Doubts? <laughs> You're all hard. He delivers his lines like a fucking champ, really puts his all into the role, especially that one agonized cry that the developers thought was so good that they never bothered using anything else. Sorry for the unnecessary montage, I just had to bring that particular sound up because at this point, after playing this game for like three weeks to make this fucking video, I cannot unhear this. I swear to god, it's like I'm haunted. I went out to buy fucking groceries the other day. I came home and I realized I bought the wrong cereal. I immediately went. I got my work schedule the other day. First thought when I looked at it was, someone has to suffer with me. Listen to it. Listen. Ah! That clip repeats ad nauseum until you want to die, basically. As does the singular death rattle for all of the henchmen. So this is what's been occupying my fucked up brain for the past two weeks, hope it sticks with you too. Alright, the story of the fucking game is what we're talking about here, and the premise revolves around Wolverine having to hunt down a cure for the Shiza virus, the Shiva virus. God, this whole game has the Shiza virus. Shiva is a deadly pathogen that was built into Wolverine as a sort of failsafe back when he was being tested on at the Weapon X facility. Logan is succumbing to the Shiza, and he has but two days to find a cure. Two days? That's my birthday. That line is stupid, but I'm okay with it. Aiding Wolverine in his quest for a cure is Hank McCoy, aka Beast, as well as Professor Xavier- ah! 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 I'm sorry, that- he just said- uh, that's a fucked up face. Wait, wait, this is actually Patrick Stewart. We can't get Hugh Jackman, but we have the money for Sir Patrick fucking St Oh yeah, I forgot he'll do anything for a paycheck. Holy fuck, they even got him to read the shitty character descriptions in the extras menu. Sabretooth, with the strength, speed, savagery, and healing factor to rival Wolverines to this day remains one of Logan's most implacable foes. Patrick Stewart... You are too good for this. So Wolverine is infected with a deadly virus, and he's off to find the cure. He's taken a civilian cargo helicopter to the Weapon X facility, but of course, tragedy strikes in the form of a weaponized missile. Who called in the airstrike? <laughs> 
All right. So does that mean it was you? After crashing into the cold, hard ground and going on a quick yeti hunting expedition where he's brutally impa- Oh my, cover the children's eyes! Wolvie finally arrives back at the Weapon X facility. Alkali Lake. <laughs> my spiritual home. So after completing this le- uh, After completing Act 3 mission- <sighs> After making his way into the Weapon X facility- Oh my god. After finally beating this goddamn- Ah, oh, fuck it! Fuck it, I'm breaking out the strategy guide! How do I do this? How do I beat this level, Michael Loomis? GIVE ME THE SECRETS, MICHAEL! Total side note, but I just want to say, I truly would not have been able to beat this game this time around without the help of Michael motherfucking Loomis. This man has written countless strategy guides. This man has dedicated his life to helping poor bastards like me beat awful fucking games like X2 Wolverine's Revenge and some other games that are slightly better. And I love it. There are certain points where even Master Mike can't come up with how the fuck to play this game. There are multiple instances where he finds much kinder words to say, I don't really know what to do. You're just gonna have to try your best. <laughs> this one goes out to you, Mike. <laughs> So back to the story, or what little of it even exists, Wolverine makes his way into Weapon X and finds that the scientists there have moved on to greener pastures and are now working under the tenure of the Void, the largest mutant detainment facility in the world. He breaks in with the help of Colossus and his fucked up eyes, grabs a disguise, botches that disguise in 25 seconds because he's Wolverine, and then proceeds to viciously carve his way deep into the Void's innermost chambers. During his travels, he comes across the Science Bay, in big yellow letters. Now, I haven't yet taken the time to talk about how horribly awkward and unfinished this game feels from a visual standpoint, like just staring at it with your eyes, but I feel like there's something special about this room that sums it all up just, just perfectly. The Science Bay, in childlike lemonade stand letters, is a room filled with five of the exact same scientists. One of them is looking through a sheet of glass at nothing. Three of them are lined up at a desk just waving their hands, and then what I can only assume is the head scientist is infinitely pacing in a circle. He must really be thinking hard, trying to solve that science. He's unflappable. Literally a hail of gunshots rained into this room as I was escaping a firefight, and these scientists were completely unfazed. Bullet holes in the walls and everything. Except that I uh, invaded the pacing man's personal space and he fucking flipped his lid, and then I thought he ran away and finally broke the cycle, but then I turned around and he was still stuck along the same path. Which honestly was the best thing that happened in this whole game. What can I say, the bar was very low. Wolverine finally finds the ex-Weapon X scientists in the heart of the void and retrieves the final chunk of the formula he needs to fight the Shiva virus. But not before Sabretooth has his way with the place. Let my people go! Really? After Sabretooth uses his expert technical skills to bash the single most important podium in this entire facility, multiple Alpha-class mutants get loose, including Juggernaut, Magneto, and Omega Red. Juggernaut. Cyborg or not, that was just plain rude. Who died and made you miss matters? <clears throat> Alright Fred, the delivery there was great, but let's do one more take where you step away from the microphone. Better get scared, short stuff! Did this guy fucking email his lines in? What is with the differing levels of audio quality here? Wolverine takes out the trash on his way out of the void and mind mails the last chunk of the antivirus back to Charles so Beast can begin synthesizing a serum. One arbitrary early 2000s turret section later and Logan's off to a nearby mill to take out Magneto before he gets too far. That's two of the Alpha Class mutants down, one to go. But before Logan can deal with Omega Red, he's stopped by a mutant hunter from the void who thanks him for stopping Magneto and offers to give him a ride somewhere. Honestly, at this point in the story, I'm pretty lost. I'm just basically reading off the Wikipedia summary at this point. This game's story is told through such sparse, short, and loose cutscenes that by the end, I don't even think the writers knew what was going on, or even gave a fuck. So long story short, the mutant hunter works for Lady Deathstrike, as did the cackling plane pilot, and also this other guy that I didn't mention because he shows up for approximately 10 seconds. The whole game was somehow an elaborate ruse by Lady Deathstrike who looks nothing like she does in the film that this game is based upon, but neither does old shovel face or alien eyes over here, so not really worth pointing out. Yuriko has been manipulating the whole situation because she's, uh, mad that Wolverine has metal bones and she doesn't? Or something. 
Who gives a fuck? That's what I should just call this video. Who gives a fuck? Wolverine boss fights her to death, throws her off a building, shows remorse for five seconds, and then rogue of all people just shows up to give Logan the cure and to star in a bunch of age-inappropriate ass shots that show off that thick 18 polygon booty. Cut to credits. But wait, there's more! The game actually ends with a remarkably cringy sequel bait cutscene that teases Apocalypse for no discernible reason. Guess they got their wires crossed as to what that third movie was actually gonna be about. Or maybe somebody in the office just made an Apocalypse model on their break one day and they were like, great job, Greg, we gotta put that in the cutscene. But Apocalypse isn't even in the game. He wouldn't have a scene for it. Who gives a fuck? But wait, there's more more. The game actually actually ends ends with this cutscene cutscene. The loudspeaker said other Alpha class mutants got loose. Who are we talking about here? Magneto and Omega Red. Omega Red. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, X2 literally ends with Wolverine remembering that the developers forgot a whole boss fight! They even had the model made! We see it! Must have been distracted with Greg's stellar, comic-accurate rendering of Apocalypse. Great job on that one, man! One last note on something vaguely related to the story. Uh, the final unlockables in X2 are a bunch of weird-ass animated bloopers that are actually pretty amazing. Might as well end this segment with something worthwhile, so roll the clip. <laughs> Here comes a real classic. This one I like. It's quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> I love the classics. In conclusion. Once upon a time, I loved this game. The time I spent with X2 was cherished as a fond memory of the days where I could just sit back and enjoy some video games without a care in the world. I now hate X2. I tried to set it on fire, but that didn't work, so I just smashed it with a hammer. Engaging with this game was fun for about one-tenth of the playtime, but after that, playing it became like taking medicine. X2 turned into Pepto-Bismol after like two hours. We've discussed a lot of what made playing this game such an arduous fucking task for me, but I'm just trying to find one succinct word or phrase to sum it all up perfectly. Uh, God, how do I describe it? Oh, I know. Ah!